and welcome to Geeky Bit. Today in tech history, I would like to talk to you about HyperCard. Yes, a long forgotten pseudo programming software package. HyperCard was like the mad child of a slideshow app and Visual Basic, as it was quite literally a visual programming language and slideshows at the same time. It was first introduced in 1987. Bill Atkinson, the creator, first came up with it after an LSD trip gave him the idea. How insane is that? Of course, HyperCard was originally in black and white on those old Macs, but can you believe it was color on the Apple II GS? 4-bit color to be specific. Sadly, in 1998, HyperCard had its last iteration. It was also rumored this is because Steve Jobs didn't like it and he didn't want it in his new Mac OS. There is known to be a tech demo for HyperCard 3.0, but Steve Jobs did ax the development. The reason most people believe Steve Jobs axed it is because creator Bill Atkinson did vote to remove Steve Jobs. And after Steve Jobs got back to Apple, he did stop the development of HyperCard 3.0. Let's boot up the Mac, set up HyperCard, and take a look. Okay, now that we're booting up the Mac, let's go ahead and let's show what this Mac has under the hood. As you can see, it's got one gigabyte of RAM, and it's a pretty decent Mac. So, moving on, let's go ahead and we will open up HyperCard folder, and then in here, we're going to go ahead and set up the color tools. So... Once we launch that color stack, we go to install color tools. Of course, I've already done it, but you click this button to install it. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and close this. And then we're going to need to do one other thing. We select the HyperCard application itself. And then we want to go to file. And then we want to go to options or get info rather. And then we go to memory. You can also do this by command key I or Apple key I, I mean. Now here is the settings I changed it to, and these will allow us to have enough RAM to do color settings in HyperCard. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get into messing with HyperCard now. Okay, let's go ahead and open HyperCard. And then once we got it open, we're gonna make a new stack. So we'll go up to File, New Stack, and then here are the different options of the sizes. We're going to go with large because we can't set custom. So now let's go ahead and name it episode four hypercard. And we'll save that. And now let me show you color options because we have that in this version. So once I bring up the window, you can see the different things that happen. We're going to get a dialog first. We go ahead and click OK. Now here we can change the color of buttons, fields, we can add pictures, and we can do a few more things. But what we need to do first is actually add some objects. So we're going to go new button, and we're going to put this down here because I want this to be a last card button. So we have all these different options for what kind of buttons we can have. We can have pop-ups, uh, we can have radials, uh, we can have check boxes, and what I ultimately want to go is with standard because I like it uh, the best for these kind of buttons. Now, let's go ahead and change its name. Obviously, it's going to be last card because that's what we're doing. And then we want to go to tasks. Now, under here, the task we want it to do is to go to the last card. So we're going to assign that task and we're going to assign another task and that is for a transition effect. So we'll go dissolve and then I think I'm going to set it to very fast because I don't want it to take too long. Then we'll assign task and then that's done. So now we need another new button. So we'll put it over here because it's going to be our next card button. And let's go ahead and select next for the task. And then let's do a transition for this as well. Uh, of course, we'll do a different transition. I think this one will work. And then we'll set it to very fast like we did with the other one. Good. Now we've got a next and last. Now we want to put in a new field so we know which card we're on. So we're going to go ahead and center this and 
what we will do is we'll change the font because we want it to be pretty large. I think maybe a 45 should work for our font point. And then um, I'm gonna change the font style. Uh, I think this one works, put it in bold. And maybe we'll go a little smidge smaller than what it is now. Yeah, that looks good. Now, we'll give it a field name. So we will call it title field. Then we'll click OK. Now, uh, what we need to do is we can hit Apple key M to edit the field, and then we can put information down below in that field. So we can do first, oh, oh, that's right. We need to select this right here. I believe we need this window, but we need to be able, we need to type it in the actual field itself. So let me center first card up a little more. All right, that looks good. So let me go back to the field tools and then we're going to click on it again. And I want to set it to opaque so that it will have a background, but it won't have a border. So now we go to tools to make sure we set that right. And we'll click. Yep. There we go. No border, but we have first card and ideally it's got a white box around it. We just can't see it. So we're going to copy that card and we're going to paste it. So that way we have two cards. And if we look at our stack info, there we go. We have two cards in our stack. However, they're identical. So, you know, first and last obviously will work, but you know, we don't know which one because they're identical cards. So let's go up to card info. All right, good. We're on card two of two. So let's change the cards name. So we will call this one obviously super conveniently second card. Let's go ahead and center this up a bit. All right, now that we've got that done, we'll close this right here. And then let's click on this. Yep, first and second, great. So our buttons are working. So let's go ahead and add some color options. So first let's change the color of the field for our title. So I like orange, so let's go with that. That looks like a good shade. Now let's change the color of these buttons. I think a light blue would go good. I like that blue. All right, now let's change this color. Um, I think a light red, almost a pink. Yes, I like that. So we're done here. So let's go ahead and we will go to a new field here. And there's a reason why I'm making a new field. It's super exciting. So I want to make these two cards a little more diverse. And one of the easiest ways is we can actually color a field. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go with maybe a, hmm, oh yeah, that color. I think I'll check that out. Let's see here. Let me select it again. Okay. Hmm. Ah, uh, you know what? Ooh, I like that green color. Oh, that is. So putrid, yes, let's go with it. Because so we want this to stand out because we're doing color options. Okay. So there we go, there's our field. Now we're gonna set this to transparent. Now it'll retain its color, but we don't want it to necessarily show anything else. So there we go. So as you can see, we can type anywhere in it because you know, it's still a field. Next, we're gonna do some other things. So we're gonna go to next card. Now, on the first card, we're gonna add some color to this one too. So first things first, let's change the color of our buttons to about what we had on the second card. I think it was this color for that button and I think it was about this color. Nope, yeah, that's the color I remember. If not, that's what we're going with now. All right, now let's change the field color for our first card. I think we'll go with about the same color orange. All right, great. You know what? How about yellow? Makes it more distinct. All right. Yep. These are two different cards for sure. Now, what we're going to do is I want to show you another thing we can do with color. Uh, we can add pictures. So we'll go ahead and go open. And then what we're going to do is click here. And then we are going to go import. And now there already is a flower.pick file. 
which is included. And we're going to use that. We're going to put it dead center here. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right. Now, let me do one more thing here. We're going to add a new button. And this is going to be, we're going to change its shape here. And what we're going to do is we are going to make it do something different. Now there's all these different options we can do for tasks. And what I want it to do is just open an application. But I'm just showing you there are some different options. So we go to choose application. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the application folder. And then I think we'll scroll down until we find an application that we want to use. So, oh, I think we'll probably end up using that simple text. Yep. So there we go. Now assign task. Now we can't just have it new button. So I'm going to change the name and we will call this text edit. Now more than that, let's change it. So it has an icon as well. What icon looks the most appropriate? Ooh, that looks appropriate. So we'll select that. And then I don't want a border, so we'll do transparent and we'll go, okay. And then there we go. Now we need to just make sure that's what it looks like. And there we go. Yep. Now let's launch it. Okay. It brings up our text editor. Great. So that works just perfectly. And we're able to go to our card. Oh, this isn't right. Why is it doing that on the other one? So it doesn't do that on next, but if we go last, it does do that. Well, something is definitely a miss there. Maybe it's a part of the transitions that I'm doing. Uh, let's close it and reopen it and see if that's what does it. Obviously, we still just have two cards, so it's definitely not doing anything different. So I think, like I said, I'm going to close the application uh, to see if that'll fix it and reopen it. All right, we're reopening it. Now, let's see here. Uh, it didn't fix it. So I think it has to do with our transition. I think that transition causes problems with the color settings. Anyways, that's pretty much what we need to do to use HyperCard. One last thing to note before we move on, you can add in your own custom scripts, making each HyperCard stack practically a full blown program. With all of that out of the way, let's get into my personal history with HyperCard. The summer before the last year of my junior high, my family and I moved across country. My new junior high had these computers called Macintoshes. They had an Apple logo on them, and that's the first time I'd seen an Apple logo on anything that wasn't an Apple II. These computers were unusually located in the school's shop classroom. If you don't know what a shop class is, typically it's a woodworking, sometimes metalworking class that you get in junior high and high school in the United States. Now the the reason for their unusual location was the shop class teacher, Mr. Wilgerton, was the only teacher taught how to use these computers. Before each shop class started, I would goof around with these computers, not really knowing what I was doing because I didn't know how to use them as I had a PC at home. Then at the beginning of one of the shop classes, the teacher did something I'd never seen before. He showed us something called HyperCard and did a slideshow to show a shop safety. Of course, that wasn't the interesting thing. The interesting thing is he used the same program to make a test to test us on shop safety. And it blew my mind that this was both something like PowerPoint and also a programming language. It was bizarre to me and it was amazing. So like I said, all the way back in tech history episode two, this was my first experience with programming using HyperCard and I would have used it more, but I only had the Macs at school. And of course I didn't have one at home and they were way too expensive to buy. So my parents would never get me one. Mr. Wiglerton saw the student's interest in HyperCard. This caused him to teach the school's first ever HyperCard class. And of course I was one of the students to 
take it. Next year, I ended up moving on to high school and I wanted to take more hyper card classes or programming classes, but the high school didn't offer it. And a friend tried to teach me Visual Basic, but unfortunately it just wasn't the same. It wasn't till my second year of college that I continued on to learn more programming that the original HyperCard program I learned so long ago fueled. And of course, that is my personal history with HyperCard. Here are some thoughts I have about HyperCard. Given Myst was made in HyperCard, I wonder what kind of other games and applications could have been made in HyperCard if it wasn't axed by Apple. If it continued to be produced and developed, I think we would have seen a much different marketplace on the App Store when it was first released for the iPhone, as there would have been a flood of games made and applications made in HyperCard. As sad as Steve Jobs' passing was, with him no longer at the helm at Apple, I wonder if it's time to bring back HyperCard, as with as easy as HyperCard is to use, even beginners could make games and applications with it. Of course, I speak from personal experience. It is much easier to use than Visual Studio or even Game Maker Studio as well. Now would be an excellent time to reintroduce HyperCard for two reasons. One, they're changing platforms to the new Apple Silicon Max, and two, there are a lot of people currently at home wanting something to do and having this new application or refreshed application would be amazing. If they did decide to reintroduce HyperCard and gave it more exporting options and of course the ability to not just do scripting but full-blown Object C, it would be an amazing programming and development tool for people that are beginners and experts alike. Thank you for watching this episode of Tech History and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Of course if you do like it feel free to like it and if you aren't subscribed already please click that subscribe button and if you want to get notifications of my new videos go ahead and click the bell button so that you do